Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. I'm your host, Francie. You join us on this corner of the internet where we talk all things electric vehicles, which of course means EV charging. We do a lot of testing over here on the Out of Spec team. Sometimes it has to do specifically with the charging. And a question we're posing today is, how on earth is it cheaper to charge your electric vehicle using diesel than public EV infrastructure that's connected to the grid. I have our good friend Kyle here to talk specifically about this because Kyle, you had a diesel generator electric char- electric vehicle charger for some testing to start off with. So maybe let's start there. W- why did you have this generator to charge the EVs? What were you doing? Yeah, well, we've been doing a truck testing month over the last month. And uh, we've had the F-150 Lightning, Rivian R1T, Tesla Cybertruck, and Silverado EV. Did I already say that one? Uh, And Hummer EV. Did I already say that one? No? Okay. So we got five trucks. doesn't matter. And those are big-ass batteries in all those trucks, technical term. And we have to charge them. And level two charging is not quite enough for the amount of uh, testing we're doing back to back. So I needed a DC charger uh, and I needed a DC charger to come with us wherever we were. And, you know, on, a lot of our testing yeah, is done out of the office, which is great, but we also go out on the roads. Another thing I really wanted to do too, was to run all the trucks to dead to do an, a, a legit range test where we charge them up to full and we just stop when they stop moving. And I have been trying to work on a mobile power solution with a battery pack and a DC charger on a trailer for months. And no one has been able to come to me with a solution that works. There's this motion company or Moxion that's pretty close, but then their battery trailer weighs 12,000 pounds. And that's too heavy for any of these electric trucks to tow. And I really wanted to do everything electric. And I was like, let's get a battery pack with a charger and go charge cars wherever we need to go. And there's just nothing on the market seemingly that fits into what we're looking for. So last minute popped up. Of course, I didn't come up with a battery solution. I said, I'm just going to go to Sunbelt, which is not sponsored. I paid them. uh, Well, I rented a 56 kilowatt diesel generator from them. It was 1800 bucks a week because I also got some accessories with it. So I I had it for two weeks. So uh, it's 3600 bucks for two weeks to have it, which is a lot of money to rent just to charge some cars, but that's what testing does here. I mean, like we just needed to charge stuff um, and charge stuff out in the wild. So um, I put on a Autel sent us a 40 kilowatt DC charger. It's a mobile one. It's on wheels. It's really cool. We're going to wrap it to look like a little minion. We've already named it Kevin after Kevin, the minion. And it's just like the workhorse. It's amazing. I have it grid powered now at our bay and I use it every day. I mean, I'm charging everything on this thing. It's just 40 kilowatts and it's a lifesaver. It's amazing to have it. So I can't recommend their unit enough. Uh, it's been amazing. The software is crazy. I get so much detail on the back end, um, but it's a, like a little light charger. So we just slapped it onto this trailer. I you know, took the red plug off. We wired it into the bus bar on the generator. My friend uh, and the guy who runs our building, Kirk, he's an engineer there. He actually did the wiring because I would have blown something up. So Kirk wired it up. We strapped it down with some tie downs, nothing fancy. And there we go. We had a diesel powered DC charger that we could bring anywhere. Wow. Okay. So portability, that was important. And you do have to use diesel fuel, right? So you started comparing the numbers by the end of things. Did you know from the beginning that you were like going to spend less money on diesel versus what you would have done with the typical infrastructure? No. So overall, because if you factor in the cost of renting it, it gets pretty expensive and and no way. But if we just look at the fuel to kilowatt hour cost versus, uh, you know, the kilowatt hour cost from the grid using public charging, it is cheaper to charge on diesel, which is crazy. Uh, I think, and that's, that was pretty eye opening. So the, the first thing we need to look at is, uh, understanding the use case for our DC charger, which was, um, mostly we were running vehicles till they were dead. We would put a Mm -hmm. few kilowatt hours in them and then we would bring them to a high power station. And we used it a ton, but we never really did these deep, long sessions. I think I did two sessions in total on diesel that totaled over 90 kilowatt hours delivered, um, which those are pretty beefy sessions, but everything else was just eight kilowatt hours, 10 kilowatt hours, four kilowatt hours, little bursts here and there. And we had something like 40 charging sessions over the 541 kilowatt hours that the unit dispensed while it was connected to diesel. Uh, Mm -hmm. I, you know, started with a full tank in the generator when I picked it up. And after two weeks, 
I pulled up to Bucky's in my cyber truck with the diesel generator on the back. We got a lot of looks filling that thing up with fuel. They're like, what are you doing? And I was, so I filled it back up and I put in 62.9 gallons to get it back to the brim. And that was $201 and 26 cents worth of diesel fuel. Okay. Which is pretty not bad. I think. Um, yeah. So if you were to look at that, like kilowatt hour to gallon rather than like miles per gallon, you get, uh, we got 8.6 kilowatt hours for every gallon of fuel. And if you think about, if you have a hundred percent efficiency, one gallon of fuel is equal to 33.7 kilowatt hours in terms of energy total. Now, nothing burns at a hundred percent efficiency. Well, yeah, this Mm -hmm. is why electric cars and range is always a topic. Um, mm-hmm. But like a combustion engine, a really nice combustion engine, you're getting into the 30% range for efficiency on your fuel burn, uh, and the rest is burnt off as heat, emissions, other things. Um, we actually got a 25% efficiency by the time the fuel went into the generator and then out through the charger. And what also this doesn't account for is actually the loss of efficiency in the vehicle side, because the charger is about 96% efficient or 95% efficient, something like that's rated pretty high. But then the vehicle also has to run cooling pumps and it has heat loss when you transfer the power into there. So even though we dispensed 541 kilowatt hours, I'm guessing we're not using this for our calculations, but that we actually only got about 500 and. 20 kilowatt hours, maybe 510 kilowatt hours worth of usable energy out of this. Um, but you yeah, know, I'm just going off what the charger said, which is it de- it delivered 541 kilowatt hours, which is 8.6 kilowatt hours per gallon. Now, a coal-fired plant, which is when you hook it up to a grid, especially at certain hours of the day where we live in Colorado, that's actually only 35% efficient at the plant level, and then you have transmission losses and other things. So in terms of energy burn efficiency and usage efficiency, we are not far off charging on coal, charging on a diesel generator. Kind of. But what about everything that's, what about the diesel getting to the gas station? Right, sure. Well, you could go back as far as you, you want. You could go back Absolutely. and back and back. Of yeah, course. You go but, back yeah. to the children mining your cobalt for your battery pack. And you go as far back as you want. You really could. You really could trace it all the way through the supply chain. But it's interesting to look at it like this because, I mean, one, it's just what you had to do. Like the fact that you're able to use a diesel generator to power an EV charger is kind of a funny concept, of course, but to see the efficiency that comes out of it. And the cost, um, you know, this is obviously not what most people would do. And when, you know, Rivian does their or, or overlanding trips that are hosted that are all EVs, they carry big batteries along with them mm, not the diesel where'd you generators. hear that well the the like big optim the one the event oh, that ryan that went was to. a hydrogen uh station i think the one with the trailer the like uh the you yeah know, the one the off-road event king of the hammers uh-huh yeah that was what hydrogen was that? powered interesting okay yeah so i've charged on that exact trailer i made a video Yo, you were there with me we charged the rolls royce specter on that trailer that's the same trailer that's the same one that was at King of the Hammers. Hmm. And it was hydrogen make... into some battery storage, which then went into the vehicle. Mm-hmm. Okay. Interesting. Unless we're thinking of something else. Now, Tesla has some mega pack powered superchargers, but yeah, oh, I might be thinking of something else, but I might not be. Who knows? Um, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But we weren't using a hi- you know a hydrogen here. Obviously. Well, I tried to do a hydrogen one. You did. We How have did hydrogen that... at the office. Um, so I was like, oh, can I? And there's just nothing that's commercially, you know, you rentable. Just can't rent a hydrogen <laughs> <laughs> So Sunbelt actually had battery packs for rentals, uh, okay. which I thought was cool. And they actually had that Moxion or Motion, you know, whatever, 600 kilowatt hour, uh, 300 kilowatt output unit, I think is what they go for, because it's usually 0.5C output on those, but they're just too heavy for any of our electric trucks to tell you need a medium or heavy duty, big ass diesel. And I wasn't going to rent a truck. I mean, the diesel generator worked fine for our needs, which is again, we only burned 62 gallons in two weeks of testing, which is like Mm -hmm. not much in the grand scheme of things. And, Mm -hmm. uh, but then it comes down to the cost of running all this, which I think is pretty interesting. So, uh, if you were to run, uh, 541 kilowatt hours through my Mm -hmm. house, which depends on time of day because I pay time of day, you know, peak rates, whatever. But I averaged my house at 10 cents a kilowatt hour. I think I pay eight cents off peak or seven cents off peak, but okay. uh, it would only be $54 for all of the electricity dispensed. Now I don't have DC power. 
Typically with DC power, you get charged demand charges and your pricing goes crazy, but we're just going to look at the per kilowatt hour rate. Mm -hmm. If I am going to, which is our alternative would be to use the public infrastructure in our area to charge up the trucks, which Mm -hmm. we still did a ton uh, Mm -hmm. with my Electrify America Pass Plus membership, which I pay, I don't know how much per month for 12 bucks, seven bucks. I'm not sure. I think it's $7 a month. Um, that would have been $227.22. And that is one of the lower cost Electrify America stations in the country. So it, the fact that charging on diesel with the DC charger is cheaper than pretty much the cheapest option of charging on a public DC charger is pretty crazy. So what I've learned now is I have to, if I have to have to charge a bunch, I'm getting another diesel generator. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's crazy. And then if definitely. you were to roll up to some of these public stations, some of these public stations go up to 60 cents a kilowatt hour or more. Uh, we've seen a dollar per kilowatt hour. That's highway robbery. But we've seen even EA stations, 62 cents a kilowatt hour in some high traffic areas. I said 60 cents a kilowatt hour would have been $324. Keep in mind, we only spent $201 dispensing the 541 kilowatt hours. So Mm. that is pretty good. Yeah, I would say it's pretty good. It's obviously a slower, you know, charge speed than you would get on the DC fast chargers, which could be a value add, like more energy and a less amount of time. So you could factor that in, but yeah, you're, you're able to get that much energy into these electric vehicles for $201, which is, yeah, pretty impressive. And obviously the portability of the diesel generator adds its own value because if you're actually if we're running these to zero that'll happen anywhere hopefully it happens close to a station but if you're just want to send it and end up on the safe side of the highway or country road then the diesel generator is kind of a no-brainer so you definitely do it again i kind of think i might even buy a generator if someone can't pitch me a battery solution that works i would prefer having a battery that i can tow again i don't need to do deep charges i just need enough to get the vehicles to the the main power points. Um, what I'd like to do is actually look at the distances you could travel on all the energy we we dispensed here. So if Definitely. we look at 62.9 gallons and um, how many miles per gallon would like a diesel truck get? Like 18, 19 miles per gallon, roughly? Uh, yeah. A on diesel. the highway, you can expect to get around 24 and in the city, you can expect to get around 19. Mm, for what vehicle? Google. <laughs> yeah, I love that one. That's a great uh, this one. Is, uh, this is coming from a Chevrolet dealership. Well, we should look at something comparable to the electric trucks we tested. So let's okay. look at a um, you know Ford F-150 mm-hmm. EcoBoost 3.5, a high output engine, because th- these are all pretty quick vehicles. Um, you know, MPG highway. And again, most of our testing is highway. So let's just look. So they're saying 24 MPG on the highway. Let's, Mm -hmm. let's say 24 MPG on the highway. That's fine. So 62.9 gallons times 24 MPG, you would be able to travel 1,509 miles for $201 and 26 cents is uh, how much it costs to fill us up. So that's the F-150 is 1,509 miles. If we look at 541 kilowatt hours, keep in mind electric vehicles are much more efficient than a combustion engine now. Um, Mm -hmm. So we can go how many miles per kilowatt hour in these trucks. They're about 2.2 on the highway, I would say, on average. Okay, so so 1,190. So you'd be at 1,190. Um. Am I surprised by that? No. I don't know. It's, How an interesting, it, it's an interesting experiment from my side. I mean, I, I mm-hmm. used it out of necessity. We needed mm-hmm. to charge. Diesel generators are ubiquitous. They work. They're, they run at you know 1,800 RPMs, flat out, very efficient. Um, again, we had a 56-kilowatt diesel generator that was running 40 kilowatts continuous, and it uh, was at like 75% load or something like that. It just didn't mm-hmm. care. It was great. It was happy. And yeah, so I, I think overall, it's not bad. Yeah, I think it's really interesting, especially when we consider what we were kind of talking about earlier, but like EV chargers that are being put in off grid and how they actually will rely on either a natural gas or maybe diesel, but I bet they'd opt for (laughs) natural gas. But I'm sure they're considering calculations like these is what is the efficiency that we're getting per gallon of these 
kilowatt hours and then miles to, to kilowatt hours. So I think that's pretty cool. I know that's happening up in BC, Canada and other places. So kind of interesting to think about if we're trying to get this energy to these last miles as we start to electrify more of our transportation system, sometimes you might not be able to use the grid. And so really thinking about the efficiency there. Interesting. It is an yeah, interesting experiment. Yeah, it seems not worst case scenario. If you have to charge on a generator, um, it's certainly like, yeah, it's probably the least efficient form of charging, but it's not that much worse than a, a combustion vehicle. So like, obviously the F-150 would be getting 24 MPG, the one that we calculated. Mm -hmm. If we look at the rough calculations, so we did 1,190 miles, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, what what would, I guess what would be the, um, MPG, you would have to, that would be equivalent would be my guess. So if you did 1,509 miles mm -hmm. divided by 541 kilowatt hours, that would have been 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour you would have to average. So none of those trucks are going to do 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour. But if I did 1,190 miles on the EV and... Let's see, divided that by 62.9 gallons of fuel, you'd be at 18, so 19 miles to the gallon. So our efficiency of driving the EV is in the MPG equivalent, if you will. This isn't how the MPG E is actually calculated. But we would it's basically like us getting 19 miles to the gallon in a truck. Okay. That's not that bad compared to I mean, that's I gotta That's tell you, I, I drive a lot of vehicles that are rated at like 24, and then I'm like, oh damn, fuel, I don't have to worry about range, wide open throttle, <laughs> going down the highway, and then I get like eight miles to the gallon. Yes, so. it, it certainly affects that efficiency for sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay, well, what's next with the diesel generator? I mean, it would be cooler to have a battery, and you know, then you could get the energy in also different ways for the battery, be able to carry it around, but you haven't seen technology that would really be as handy dandy as the diesel generator so far. No, there, it, it, it totally exists. The problem is a lot of the batteries are just too big. They're 600 kilowatt hours, 800 kilowatt hours, a megawatt hour on wheels. I need like a hundred kilowatt hours or 200 kilowatt hours on wheels that would weigh, you know, as long as I could get a trailer that weighs less than 2000 pounds, that would be amazing. Oh, but it sounds like you just need another electric truck with V to V. So electric truck with V to V, I mean, I kind of have that with the cyber truck now and that is too slow. It does like nine kilowatt output, which is not mm -hmm. enough. No, I need 40 is minimum. I've learned our little 40 kilowatt hotel is like perfect, but I wouldn't want anything slower than 40 kilowatts. Because we're on yeah. the side of the highway. We want to get off the highway. Gonna, we don't want to be mm -hmm. there. So if we yeah, could do, just, honestly, if we could find like a 100 kilowatt charger with a mm -hmm. 200 kilowatt hour battery pack, which it falls mm -hmm. perfectly in line with the five point uh, five c that energy storage usually is rated at, mm -hmm. that would be the dream. That would be the end-all, be-all solution. I'd be interested to see what our audience thinks would be another uh, either interesting experiment or uh, another you know solution to Kyle's can't carry around a megawatt worth of battery power on a trailer solution. Yeah. I, I want to be able to tow it honestly with my Rivian. So my Rivian can tow 11,000 pounds. That's what I mm -hmm. kind of have moved to my, like my working vehicle. I drive that all the time. It's what I'm always filming with and filming out of. And uh, I really want a battery pack. Like I said, with a DC charger on it that I can tow behind that. And that would be mm -hmm. the dream. That would be the dream. I think it would be fun to have such a setup like that and go anywhere. Do any testing anywhere. That's right. The day will come. One day. Keep your well, eye out. It's been fun. Yeah, it's been super fun. Thanks, Kyle. Any tests coming up next? Yeah, but we won't share what they are. Always secrets with you. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Let us know what you think about the charging for cheaper with diesel than you would with Electrify America. Are you surprised? Mm. Let us know. We'll catch you next time on the next episode. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. This episode is made possible by the support we get from Fort Collins Kia. If you are in the market for any electric Kia, not only do they never add market adjustments, they will deliver your car to you anywhere in the 48 contiguous states for out-of-spec viewers. More information in the link in the show notes.